elements. We see them all around us. They are our sustenance, responsible for our existence as well as our death. Since the beginning of time, man has wondered what substances are composed of. In the 1600s, Irishman Robert Boyle defined the term element as a substance impossible to be broken down into more parts, the simplest and the purest. For the sake of convenience, scientists have given each element a symbol based on their Latin, English, or Greek names. When writing this symbol, the first letter is always capitalized. For example, the symbol for fluorine is a capital F, and the symbol for oxygen is a capital O. However, in many cases, there are two letters that are used in the same symbol in reference to a single element. In that case, the first letter stays capitalized, but the second letter becomes lowercase. The symbol for zinc is capital Z, lowercase n, and the symbol for chlorine is capital C, lowercase l. Some element symbols seem remote to the standard English speaker. Let's take element gold, symbol AU. At first glance, AU seems completely unaffiliated with gold. However, with a closer look, the Latin name for gold is arum, thus coining the symbol AU. The English language consists of 26 letters. These letters are the fundamental components, but when combined, they form hundreds and thousands of words. This can be applied to your periodic table. Every element is like a letter. Every compound is like a word. Compounds are composed of elements. They are pure, but not simple. Around the early 1700s, it was commonly known that a given compound always contained the same proportions in terms of mass of the elements. This is called the law of constant composition. For example, water always contains 8 grams of oxygen per 1 gram of hydrogen, but nobody knew why. In the late 18th century, an English scientist and teacher, John Dalton, founded the solution. He came up with what is known as the Dalton's Atomic Theory. He explained that, First, although elements are indeed the fundamental components, they can be broken down even further into tiny particles called atoms. Second, he theorized that the atoms of a given element are identical. However, the atoms of a given element are different from those of any other element. Also, the atoms of one element combine with atoms of another element to form compounds. A given compound always has the same relative numbers and types of atoms. Last, atoms are indivisible in the chemical process. That is, atoms are not created or destroyed in chemical reactions. A chemical reaction simply changes the way atoms are grouped together. These new understandings revolutionized the world of science. He satisfied scientists' understanding of the law of constant composition by explaining that compounds are units of elements. A compound always contains the same relative numbers of atoms of each element. Now, instead of focusing on the composition of elements, scientists began to ponder about the composition of the new mysterious atom. J.J. and William Thomson both proposed that the atom is a ball of positive charge with sprinkles of negatively charged electrons. This coined the term the plum pudding model because it looks something like a plum pudding dessert, where the little sprinkles are contrasted to raisins. In 1991, Ernest Rutherford devised an experiment to study alpha particles which weighs approximately 7,500 times more than that of an electron. His experiment involved a source of alpha particles, then metal foil, and a screen to detect the alpha particles. He assumed that the alpha particles would penetrate through the thin metal foil with relative ease, and the alpha particles would only be detected on the other side of the foil. Confident, he performed the experiment only to find that some of the alpha particles deflected off of the thin metal sheet and scattered. He compared this to firing a cannon at a sheet of paper, only to witness it bounce back. If the plum pudding model was correct, then the particles could have easily passed through. Rutherford concluded that this experiment proves that there must be a positively charged center to every atom that is dense enough to deflect alpha particles. This center became known as the nucleus. He also concluded that the nucleus was composed of positively charged subatomic particles, called protons, along with uncharged neutral particles, called neutrons. The neutron was a proposition by Rutherford's co-worker, James Chadwick. When Chadwick discovered neutrons, he began to disprove Dalton's second theory, all atoms of a given element are identical. 
In many cases, the number of protons equals the number of electrons as well as the number of neutrons. However, there are many elements that are isotopes, or atoms with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. When referring to elements, especially isotopes, notation is important. Let x be defined as the element symbol, a as the mass number, protons plus neutrons, and z as the atomic number, number of protons. Using this, you can calculate the number of protons, neutrons, or any other missing variable. Let's take a closer look at the periodic table of elements. The periodic table is a chart of all known elements. It is ranked in the order of the atomic number based on the number of protons. Dmitry Mendeleev is the Russian scientist who arranged the periodic table into columns. Each column represents a group of elements. The first column consists of alkali metals. The second column consists of alkaline earth metals. The seventh column consists of halogens, eighth of noble gases. Between the second and the third column lie the transitional metals. Most elements are metals. Only a small number of elements in the upper right corner are nonmetals. There are even fewer metalloids, which have both metallic and nonmetallic properties. If you have trouble remembering which ones are metalloids, just remember that they resemble a seven block staircase. Some elements naturally occur in groups of two atoms. These are called diatomic molecules. Examples are nitrogen and hydrogen. Some elements lose or gain electrons to form ions. A positive ion is called a cation, and a negative ion is called an anion. In most cases, the elements form ions based on their location in the periodic table. From groups 1 through groups 3, the charges resemble the group number. Group 7 gains an electron, while group 6 gains 2 electrons. The noble gases are the least reactive and the least likely to form ions. So, in conclusion, we learned that Boyle defined the term element as the simplest and the purest. We learned how to write an element symbol in the creation of compounds. We saw that Dalton's theory was surprisingly accurate, but nevertheless still flawed. We explored the atom and its marvelous history starting from Thomson's plum pudding model to Rutherford's model. We know that the atom has a dense nucleus consisting of protons and neutrons, while electrons revolve around it. The sum of the protons and the neutrons is the atomic mass. The atomic number is based on the number of protons. This is chemistry on its most basic level.